Thanks. Thanks, John. You know, the prayer we just prayed, uh, Pastor, is it Pastor Ed? Yeah? Thanks. Uh, you know, the power of God being made manifest in our lives and that that would be a, a real cry of our hearts. Um, I'm just going to pray a second. I just thank you, Lord, for everybody that's gathered here. God, I thank you for the freedom that we have. Father, I thank you that you raise up disciples and people of peace. Lord, that uh, would lay their lives down for your message, for your gospel, for your truth, God. Lord, I just thank you that uh, you gave the authority to your people. And uh, you said all power and authority is given to me. Now I send you in my name. So, Father, I just thank you for the scent. Lord, we pray for workers in the harvest field. God, that you just raise up a new breed of Christian uh, that would walk with you and, and know your power. And, uh, and God, uh, surrender to your voice, your spirit. Um, Hebrews uh, 3, 7 says, if you hear his voice today, um, don't harden your heart. Um, like they did in the wilderness. And so, God, we just thank you for soft hearts. I just pray every one of you just get hungry in your spirit. Because those that hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. filled. Amen. So I, I, I'll just share, I'll share a little bit of testimony, but I, I'm going to share. I don't know what I'm going to share. The Lord's going to have to show me what to share. The, uh, the reality is, is, is exactly um, what our pastor here pr uh, prayed is, is what God put on my heart early on. And, um, you know, when I first got a touch of God, I didn't believe in the prophetic I didn't believe in the power of God. I had never seen it in my life. I, ha I had never encountered healing. I had never been talked to in, a, in, a, in, authority, in an authority way, like by a person who knew their identity in Christ. I'd never had anybody come up and say to me, you know, Art, you have an identity that's, that's, that's been put on you, and you don't even know it. You're still living as an orphan. And, um, you know, I wish that that was the case. I got born again in a bar while I was having beers with a couple friends. One of my buddies from, Eric, uh, from Smithers is here. Eric was there, um, him and his wife, a bunch of other people. They dared me to sing How Great Thou Art in front of uh, all the people at a karaoke night. And so that was my profession of faith. I had done profession of faith prior to that in, in a church setting. Um, and it was to me, it was more like, well, it's time to become a man. But that's what everybody sort of told me to do, that this is what is expected of you. And uh, when the time actually came uh, for me to truly profess my faith, it was when I was challenged in a bar to sing How Great Thou Art. And, and at the beginning of the song, I was very spooked to do it, and I didn't want to do it. And I thought, this is kind of irreverent or, you know, whatever. But so you can see my life, one foot in the world, one foot in the church. And uh, God was going to call me out that day. And... Um, and he did. And when, it, when I went up there to sing uh, halfway through that song, um, just a, a power and love like liquid oil came into, into the top of my head, right down the middle of the center of my head. And it just flowed through into my body and, uh, and it changed my eyesight immediately. I was convicted immediately of how I would speak and, and what I would say to people. And I used the occasional F-bomb and um, immediately I was convicted about that. I was convicted about sin. There's a verse in the Bible that says, when the Holy Spirit shows up, there's, what's one of the things? The conviction of sin. Is that right? And uh, so, you know, it was uh, a powerful experience. And I went to the bathroom and I cried afterwards. I sang my heart out after that. I was just so excited to be testifying for God up here on the stage in front of the, in front of the bar crowd. And, uh, you know, after the song's done, the, the whole crowd goes quiet and... There's this one biker guy, and he's just, he's bald head in the back of the room, and he's clapping, amen, brother, he goes. And uh, so we had a small revival. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was a, for me, it was just the first touch of God. And then, you know, I started looking, and I, I was on YouTube about two weeks later, and there was all these, uh, you know, I used to, I was kind of at this point trying to repent from sin, and and, and, and sort of take my, my, my faith a little more seriously. I was in a, a, ch a little church in Telco that was 
you know, more alive, and it seemed like uh, it was going to be, you know, following God was going to be a good thing, and I started to feel a little bit more life in me. So this was God now opening my eyes to the fact that He is real, and He actually does come, and He does initiate things, and He does speak, and 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 He moves with His power, and it was just like a small whisper, even though it was a it was a pretty powerful event. Um, it faded over two weeks. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching YouTube and I'm, I'm watching rally car racing and all of a sudden come across, across my screen comes this uh, um, a testimony and it says, um, uh, urgent warning, man sees judgment day. And God used that. He used that. I'm going to drink somebody's water here. Hopefully you don't have cooties. I don't believe in cooties. I don't believe in cooties. I don't believe that. I don't believe that um, that they have the authority that we think they have. Uh, that's just, I'm just gonna throw that in there. Um, so, anyways, back to back to the testimony. Um, God was showing me that He's real, and uh, you know, I seen this YouTube video, and uh, it really rocked my world. And I, I I started to realize, you know, if God can do this, like if He can. If he can speak to people and give them a ministry and and raise people up out of darkness and I was like, man, I, I want that. Like I want to work for the kingdom. And I, I never had this idea that God would actually raise people up to actually be ministers of reconciliation. Because I hadn't seen it. I I don't think I'd really seen it. I always thought it was just just the pastor's job to do all the work and we just enjoy the show and, and and it's almost like that's what Christianity's become in some ways, you know? And so we started walking this out. And I, and I soon enough, I started to see God move through. I started looking on YouTube, like, what's the truth? What's out there? And what is Christianity actually at its fullest in this world? What is the actual embodiment of a, of a Christ-like person? And I started just to look on YouTube. I'm, and, and, and I felt I just would pray to God every time for discernment. Lord, help me to grow. Lord, don't lead me astray. And, if, and, and, and the Lord came to me kind of in a, in a revelation at one point. Oh, bless you. Thank you. <laughs> you were worried about the water. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, and and uh, where was I? Um, yeah, the, the Lord spoke to me one day, I, I believe just in my heart, and he said, uh, if you can't trust me to lead you, who can you trust? And I started looking out at all the people, and I started looking at the divisions and the separations and the different denominations, and it seemed like there's a, there's a verse in uh, Jeremiah 23, God put me there, and it says, um, he says this, he says, woe to the pastors and teachers, and I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, but he says, who cause divisions in my people and and who, who who divide the people now that was kind of a weird thing to say cuz i don't know how that how does that work how does how do how do we divide people and this is a conclusion that that i believe the lord showed me we've based all of our uh, faith on our book knowledge on our reading and our studying of the word of God. But Jesus says this, he says, if you read this word, but don't do what it says, you will be deceived. Those are the words of Jesus. And, and I started looking at that and I thought, well, how do I know that I'm not deceived? Like, how do I know that I'm genuinely not dividing people instead of bringing them together? How do I know that I'm actually walking the walk that Jesus has, has called us to walk. And he says, in this world, you'll be like me. And so, me, I mean, I started going out on my own. And I've, I've, I've been praying for people for four, probably four and a half years now. And, uh, and, and it sounds really silly. It's so foolish to so many of us that we would go out and pray for people. And, you know, what are we going to do? Like, you know, summon God? or but, but Jesus says, greater works will you do in this kingdom, in this world. And I started seeing that the apologetics that we need to use more than anything is the power of God. Because you know what? I've, I've argued with people till I was red in the face. 
about what I had known and what they had, and it was like two things and we just divided over it. And there was, I don't think any side of either side, maybe we didn't come to truth. What we did was we came to offense. And the Bible says that when offense comes, many are led captive by the devil to do his will. And so this is one of the biggest things that God's been working out in my heart. And what I see is a huge, huge stumbling block to the body of Christ. And what we, we have differences of opinion. And there's going to be a thousand different beliefs in this crowd. There's probably only 200 of you. <laughs> there's, you're never going to have it all figured out. You're never going to know it for sure and for certain. But one thing I do know is that you are the light of the world. You're God's best. You're the people that he raised up for this season. And he thought it a good idea to put his spirit in your heart. Because he knew that his power was what you needed to discover what was true. Amen. God is able to raise us up. And I know that in my heart, I a lot of people wouldn't touch me because I'm a little... I'm a little, maybe I'm, in, maybe I'm intimidating. I don't think that's what it is. I think I'm just used to being a, a bit of a lone soldier. And I'm not used to taking uh, orders. Maybe that's what it is. God's healing a lot of my rebellion. Because um, we do have to humble ourselves because we need each other. The body of Christ is a body. And the eye can't say to the lips, I don't need you. And the healing hands of Christ would never tell the rest of the body, don't follow me. So we got to walk with him. And I know that, and if you can just get a visual in your mind of what it would look like to see Jesus in your community. Like it would be real simple. He'd be blessing people. He'd be praying for the sick. He'd be preaching the word of God and the kingdom of God by demonstration. And he'd be proclaiming eternal life. For all creation, that there is enough. The blood of his atonement is enough for all creation. And, uh, you know, I had, a, I had a revelation. Like, I've had a lot of, uh, I've just been seeking God. And I want what God's got to give me. And I've had revelations from the Lord. I've had visions. I've had dreams. I've had, I had a prophetic dream. Uh, five years ago, at the beginning of this, about what we're seeing now. COVID, attack on truth, uh, government, government kind of tyranny, if you call it, in a way, um, an overstepping and uh, uh, basically uh, 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 trying to take away of freedom. And that was in a dream. And it's actually on YouTube. You, it's recorded. You can listen to it. And it was about a coming attack on truth. And what it was, was it was a test and a judgment for God's people. Do we have faith to walk with the Lord in the times that are coming? Do we know about the healing power of God? Do we know about it? Do we know that we are the hands and feet of Jesus? And he said, go. So many people, we sit in church and we just cry out to the Lord. God, come, come, come. And then we'll go and then we'll go. But Jesus says, go and then I'll come. Because there's no lying in the kingdom. You can't fake your way in. You can't jump over the fence. You get the robes of righteousness. You get the character of Christ through the sufferings of Christ. It's the blood that continually cleanses us. The blood represents the suffering. And if we don't have a heart for our community, of course we're not going to be considered a necessary thing in a time of tragedy right so so what were we called uh, um, what do they call everything uh, unnecessary services or what was it non-essential non -essential. listen to that that is a slap in the face to our king because a hundred years ago the church was essential and, and, and people, even now in South Africa, you can talk to South African people and people that they got sick, they would go first to the church for prayer. And we've seen people healed. I've seen so many people get healed. And it's just by simply going and doing the work of God. Just simply going out. Yesterday, sorry, me and Carl 
we're on the street and, and our families, we're just playing guitar here. And people came and we got to minister to them. I know that all of you guys are filled with talents that are far beyond uh, maybe what you're using or far beyond what you think you're called to. But like Jesus said, we'll do greater things. And that's because there's so many of us at the same time at work. And, and it's not about, there's the doctrine of works. It's not about works, people say. But meanwhile, Jesus prayed to send workers into the harvest field. So it's not about religious works. It's not about a, just a church attendance or, a, a, you know, coming to church every Sunday and just, you know, thinking that that's your due diligence. No, it's about becoming like the person of Christ. We are his representatives. We're to represent the person of Jesus to a lost and dying world, right? We're the only hope that your clerk has. We're the only hope that the guy in front of you has at the restaurant. We're the only hope that the people at the park have. We're the only hope. And Jesus says, without love, we have nothing. So who is Jesus to us? Right? And, and I'm not saying that, uh, you know, I'm, I don't live in each one of your lives. I don't walk with everybody. I don't know where everyone is with God. But I know that as far as me and my house will serve the Lord. And, uh, and I'm, going, I'm going to, you know, I, I'm going to surrender my life to God. I was born again. You know, when I was baptized in water, the old part of me, the old dead thing, the old body that was on me, it was buried. And I was set free. And, and those are things that are written in the Bible. It's a circumcision of the flesh. And, and it's, it's not just a symbol. The Bible doesn't talk about it that way. And so I've, I've, I've given my life not to scold people or proclaim that I know all the truth, but I've given my life so that I could live like Christ and be a demonstration because I know that we have a huge mishmash of theology. But our theology is to go make disciples of all nations. That was the last word that Jesus left us with. And if we look at his life, he lived the commission. Man, we've seen so many cool things. I was up in Bell 2 last, uh, like last month, and uh, we were doing, uh, I have, I'm a drywaller, so that's how I fund my ministry. We drywall and we preach the gospel. We pray for people and we've seen miracles. We were up in Bell 2 uh, last week and I was, I was working up there and there was a Muslim man. And uh, you know what? I really love Muslim people. I've, I've spoke to them. I've got to know a few of them. And they remind me of me before I was born again. And this guy, we were, he's an electrician. He's wiring up this, uh, this building. And uh, he starts preaching to us because I asked him if he knew Jesus. And he goes, yeah, yeah, Jesus is the prophet. Yeah, yeah, we know Jesus. And uh, I said, uh, no, no, do you know uh, Jesus, your Lord and Savior? He says, no, no, no. He goes, you must read the Koran. And he says, and there you go. Now I told you. And I said, so that's it. Are you going to try to convert me at least? Or, you know, say something. He goes, he says, nope, but now I'm off the hook. <laughs> and I said, so I said, are you saved? He says, eh, 50-50. I said, there's a verse in the Bible that says, be sure to confirm your salvation. And uh, he says, oh, he says, what is that? I said, well, God builds the kingdom of God inside of us. He does something on the inside of us that that is unseen by mostly most men, but it's like a secret thing. You ever heard that verse? He says, I'm doing a secret thing. And and it's almost like it doesn't come out of you until you get squeezed a little. You know, I, you ever heard this expression? If you squeeze an orange and apple juice comes out, that would be weird. So if you're a Christian and you get squeezed and anything other than Christ comes out, that's kind of weird. Because you are the ones made in his image. You are the ones that proclaim his name. You're the ones that follow him. So, so when you get squeezed, don't let, that, uh, don't let that rattle you. Don't let that offend you. Learn how to manifest the king. Learn how to be unoffended. So this Muslim guy, I'm up on stilts. And, and, and it was me and a, and a friend that I've been discipling. We give guys jobs to help them to come to the Lord, because you know how people, they need to be taken out of their lifestyle, and they need to see something real. So if you're, if you're, if you can, you, you have what it takes to give to people. 
Um, a lot of us just haven't stretched ourselves that way, but God says practice uh, hospitality, right? So I'm up on stilts and this guy's down there and he says, and I feel like I get a word for him. And this is a normal thing. God says to some, he gives a word of knowledge and it's so that you can cut the heart with truth. So that's when you say something to this guy, hey, you're ba you got a sore back. He goes, I did that to a doctor one day. Actually, it was a dentist. It was his elbow. He said, you got a sore elbow. I was in the dentist chair. I'm praying for him. I'm thinking, God, is there anything that I can say to this guy that will help him to see that you are king? And, and I hear, I just, I just feel in my heart, this guy's got a sore elbow. He's, he's a, a, a dentist from Houston. You might even know him. And he had a, he had a bad elbow. Anyways, um, after I was done the surgery, I got up and prayed for him. And uh, he was real thankful for that. Um, do I know if he was healed? No, but I trust him with God. And we miss every shot we don't take. So uh, this Muslim guy, I, I hear this kind of a word for him. I, I said, hey, brother, you got, a, you got a pain in your knee. And I, but I have boldness to do this now because I've seen it so many times where we have seen people healed. We have seen people get touched by God. We have seen it. So now I have boldness for it. Uh, and because faith, by faith, there's more grace. And if you live by faith, you receive grace. You just receive grace. You receive more freedom. You receive more confidence. I call it Godfidence. It's confidence in who he is Amen. in you. Amen. And so I said, brother, can we pray for your knee? And we pray for his knee. And it was me and me and a guy named Mario. And we pray for his knee. And I said, so now check it. Can you check? Can you check and see how it feels? And he goes, he goes down. And he goes, well, he says, I don't feel it now. But we'll see. And the rest of the day, he worked. And he was working up and down, putting in plugs. And I watched him. And he, and he was, I could see he was moved. At the end of the day, we're working away. He comes up to me, and, he, and he's about to leave. He's got to go back to Vancouver. He says, he's, he says, brother, he says, do you pray for a man's spirit? Can you pray for a man's spirit? Because I don't have peace. And I said, brother... I worship the Prince of Peace and I follow the Prince of Peace and I, I took my stilts off and we jumped down and we laid hands on him and uh, and he starts to cry because the power and the presence of God is on him now because there's Christians in the room that know their authority in Christ and what happens when that happens the devil's gotta flee because you have authority and you gotta walk in this authority we lay hands on him, I said, but I'm not going to pray in the name of Allah, bud. you got to pray to Jesus. And you know what he did? He said twice in a row, Jesus, come into my heart. I want your peace. I got a text message from him a couple weeks ago. We're still working on that one. But I trust God with him. You know what I mean? And what it is, it's a seed. You don't have to get everybody to say a prayer. You don't have to get everybody to... To come into your church. You don't have to get every... You just got to be light. You just got to sow a little seed. Some people harvest it sometimes. Some people sow. So when you're sitting at the till, bless somebody with five bucks. God bless you. You're their only hope. When you're, when you're ordering your food and the waitress sucked and dropped something or did a real bad job... Give her a hug and say, God bless you, girl. You know what? You're having a hard day. Here's, a, here's, a, here's 20 bucks, you know? And watch it. I've had waitresses run out into the parking lot because we tipped our bill. And I'm not saying this for my benefit. I'm saying this for yours. I don't hold out my right hand to show what my left hand's doing. I'm not trying to do that. I'm saying this for your benefit. We've done things like that. Radical generosity. And we're in the car about to leave. And the lady runs out of the restaurant. She goes, what are you doing? You, you made a mistake. You made a mistake. No, the, the, the money, you, you tip the same as the bill. And it was a Chinese food restaurant, if you didn't understand the accent. <laughs> and uh, she goes, uh, I said, no. I said, we, we, we just wanted to bless you, my wife and I. She's, my wife is so on board with this. And uh, the girl just starts crying. Oh, you do this for me? You know, and we're just like, it's from Jesus. Amen. Because we are his representatives and you know the coolest thing that I've seen like the craziest thing is God's kingdom doesn't make any sense you got to give to get right you got to die to live 
It's all upside down. And, and, and this craziest thing, the blessing of God that's come over our lives. And I don't see, I'm not seeking God for his blessing. That's a bonus of just being a child of God. I believe that. But the beautiful thing is God has prospered the work of our hands in ways that we had never, ever dreamed. It's like, it's like provision comes to us in a natural way. We don't all of a sudden get a lottery number or somebody just drops off a check for 10,000 bucks. It never had anything like that happen. We've had, we've had just the blessing of the work of our hands. It's so cool, man. And, and, and for a guy that was always broke and always trying to, to, to rummage in the gutters of this world to get life for himself or something to fill his tank, to, to, to now be starting to treat things with an open hand and it's powerful. We prayed for a guy last uh, last summer on the main street of Smithers and his back got healed. And he just threw his hands in the air and he said, okay, he goes, I hate it when you guys do this to me. And I said, what's going on? And he says, something, something left me. And I said, what do you mean you guys? He said, uh, I've had this once before where I was walking by a church and all the people were outside worshiping. And, and, and as I walked by, this old guy grabbed me and he said, I bless you in Jesus name. And he said, and something left me. And he said, and it freaked me out. And now you just prayed for me. And he said, now the pain's gone. And as we're sitting there talking with him, you ever heard the verse in the Bible that Paul says this? He says, I knew that you were uh, the elect of God or called by God because of the power that was demonstrated to you. You ever heard that verse? Oh, yeah. it's, it's in the Bible. I might not be word for word, but sometimes when you see like a person get prayed for and then they get healed really quickly and it's a powerful thing, you know that God's calling them. So instantly I started talking to him. I said, God is calling you and he's speaking to you right now. You, you've been searching for truth and now God is showing you and he just starts crying and he goes, what do you? What are you saying? He says, how do you know? How do you know me? I said, I said, I know a verse in the Bible that says this. When the power of God is demonstrated to someone, God is, God is pointing the finger at them and, and calling them. And uh, he says, you know, we started talking. And he says, you know, as, as we're talking, he goes, the pain's coming back. And I said, when did it happen? He goes, well... When I was swimming across the lake, I had, I had my, my wakeboard beside me and I was swimming. And all of a sudden, it's just this pain come over my back. He said, I couldn't even swim. I had to roll onto the board and I had to just sort of gently paddle my way back because he said the pain came over me and it was just so strong. And it just, and it's just been there ever since. And um, I said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities and heavenly hosts in, 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 in dark spiritual places. We don't even realize in a, lot of, in a lot of ways that we are warring against an unseen world. And I said, let me pray again. Let's just pray again. I think it's spiritual. I think it maybe could be something demonic. It could be something like that. We have to account for that stuff in the church. God says we'll cast out demons. I don't know if we even see that. I've seen some crazy deliverances just through seeking the Lord, just through praying for people. And we pray for this guy again, and, the, and, he, and he throws his hands up in the air again. He goes, okay, all right, okay. And you can tell he's visibly shaken with what's happening to him. And shortly thereafter, his wife gets in contact with me, and they both surrender their lives to Jesus, get baptized in the Bulkley River on an October night. Wow. And, and so this is the power of God, the best apologetics. Right? So if we, if we train in righteousness and right, right understanding, we, we can actually become unified in our mission. Because I've never seen in a battlefield ever once where the soldiers are like, I can't fight next to you. you, you you're weird. We're in a battle. We're in a battle. We have a commission from God that we were sent to fulfill. And he says, greater works will you do. Greater works will you do. We have that commission on all of our lives. And then when it comes to the end of our time, 
Are we going to be the ones who were in the wilderness, which is right where we are now? Are we going to be the ones who were faithful? And I'm not saying you have to be have an apostolic calling where you walk the you know the earth and and go to different places. I'm saying right here in your community, you can bless someone and sow a seed today. Period. You might some of you guys might be going for dinner today. It's as simple as just God bless you. It's as simple as just leaving a five dollar tip so that you would be a light. Because God so loved that he gave, right? So that we should be givers. Right? So so these are all things that we can do to be a light. And uh, it's powerful. It's powerful. It has transformed my life 100% completely. I walk from victory to victory. I don't go from bummer to bummer. It's not a bummer being a Christian. I spend time in the presence of the Lord each day. I give him my life. And if there's something that he convicts me of, I try my best to make it right. I try my best to do it. If there's something that he puts on my heart to repent of, or some way that I could surrender to him more fully, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. He's a good father, a good king. He's here to free us. He's not here to separate you. He's not here to thump you. He's here to raise you up. He's here to raise you up. It's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Amen? Glory. Amen. We're catching it. We're catching a little bit. This isn't a charismatic thing. This is a surrender to God thing. And because, like, think about it, man. 120 people, like right here, changed the whole world after Pentecost. That was the day that the whole world began to change. Because people now laid down their lives. You can't stop a love like that. Like think about in China, the Muslim countries, where people are actually able to lay down their lives. We can still do that here today, is lay down our life. It's just a matter of surrendering to God. It's so basic. It's so basic. And, and, and Jesus, I think Paul says this, he says, I, I'm so worried about you that you would lose the simplicity of the gospel. Which would be to sit in his presence... To hear his voice, be still and know that he is God, and let the word light your path. Because it's so cool. Like this morning, I knew I was going to be speaking here. God bless you, John. I'm just so excited to be able to share. This is actually one of the first times I've been able to share after really having a restoration done in me. Um, other than I go to a lot of events in different towns, never close to, to my hometown. And... <laughs> That's how it is, I guess, hey, they say. And so I got this, I got this, uh, you know, this morning, I just turned to the word. I'm just, God says, be at peace. He said, be at peace. I'm with you. That's what he said to me this morning. And I, and I opened my Bible. And this is the message for all of us today. And I hope you hear me when I say this. Because it's God's word. And he wanted me to read this to you guys. Therefore, Hebrews 12, Romans 12. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. You can sing a song your whole life and get it wrong. You can praise God in a tent in a church your whole life and never get it right because you never walked in love and without love we have nothing you know the gifts Jesus calls us to the gifts he says earnestly desire the gifts but then at the very end of all the gifts he says he says but there's a greater way a more excellent way and that's the way of love now that's what makes us and motivates us to desire the gifts do you understand it's kind of like a roundabout way at the end, he says, love is the motivator. Well, love is the one that makes you desire the gifts so that you can more fully represent the person of God. Does that make sense? Can I get an amen? amen. amen. <laughs> so, so this is, but the beautiful thing is this is the grace of God. This is the power of God. The, the grace of God isn't some invi invisible umbrella that just covers us in all our offenses and sin. John, uh, or not John, uh, yeah, John. Uh, 1 3 I think says or 1 John 1 3 says uh, you know we may not continue in sin now that doesn't mean that we don't stumble and fall we have one that intercedes for us when we make mistakes right 
And, but, but I don't wake up every day wondering when I'm going to sin today and how I'm going to fall short. I, want, I wake up every day to represent Jesus as a son. Amen. And I represent every day knowing that that's who I am. And it's called Godfidence. It really is. It's called Godfidence. And so he says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good and pleasing and perfect will. So he says, then if you do this, if you renew your mind and do not conform to the pattern of this world, to being offended and taking offense and, and walking away from people that don't understand you and having an issue with people that you just don't get along with. And I got a few buttons and you just pushed them. You can go buttonless. You can go buttonless. You can actually have peace. Just think about Jesus up there on the cross saying, Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they do. And he says that same power, that same character can be in you. Yes, amen. And we think, whoa, wait a second. I don't know if that's even possible. But God's grace says it is. It's God's grace that is made perfect in your weakness. So if you call out for God to do these things in your heart and to transform you seriously and surrender your life because half in Christianity does not work. It does not work. You, what part does darkness have with light? What part does good have with evil? If you ever baked a cake and put a little bit of dog poo in there, I bet you none of you would eat it. Unless we didn't tell you. Yeah. So, so guys, I just want to. I just want to say, there is so much more that we can become through the Spirit of the Lord Jesus. And through the surrender of our lives and just trust and know that he is a good father remember he says this my yoke is light my burden is easy and I, if I can just please call out to you from my heart just to encourage you all of these things all of it is yours all his promises yes and amen so God bless you thanks for hearing my testimony <laughs> All right, thank you, Art. Well, he preached it for both of us. Uh, that was uh, powerful. God is using this man. What's that? That's okay. I said we're humble servants, didn't I? Say? <laughs> okay. So, with the worship.